Let's the beam talk about team. It. Let's talk about the beam team. You know, here's what I'll say about the Sacramento Kings. You know, I was a very <laughs> big detractor. I, I I'm still am. I'm not gonna get off my. I'm I'm gonna stay on it. I'm gonna stay on the uh, on the on the Sacramento Kings just missing out in the play in. But currently, the Sacramento Kings are playing out of their gourd right now. Um, yep. And it's thanks to Mike Brown. Uh, the defense and obviously uh, De'Aaron Fox playing tremendous basketball and also, you know, Sabonis doing his thing um, for this team. I think that this team, you know, also Kevin Herter, man, Kevin Herter's playing really well. Um, well, well we're going to talk about Kevin Herter. Yeah. Um, and so obviously the Kings are, are playing really well. Second in the Pacific division, uh, obviously with the roster that they have, the schedule that they've had so far, um, you know, the last, last couple, two games they've lost. Uh, but you know, they've beaten teams like the Memphis Grizzlies, obviously beat the breaks off the Brooklyn Nets, beat the Golden State Warriors, beat the, uh, the Lakers, beat the, the Cavaliers. Um, this is starting to become sort of a special team in, uh, in Sacramento, I would say. Um, and so Pete, I know that you are more of a believer in them than I am. Uh, so what's your take on the Sacramento Kings this season? Obviously for every win they get at home, the beam lights up and they're, you know, winning games. And that's kind of contributed to a lot of things. Some, uh, some, uh, basketball gods type of deal. Um, yeah. What, what's your take on this Kings team? Are they for real? Are they legit? I know we talked about them in a cap or no cap segment. Uh, but are they, are they legit? That's the big question. So this, it's it's tough to say because I do think they are legit. However, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a it, it's almost a, a mix of two things. I think they're outperforming a little bit. You know, I think the shooting has to come down just a little bit. Their offensive efficiency is just absurd at the moment. And their shooting shooting splits are like just absolutely bonkers. Like just Kevin Herter alone is shooting 50% from three on more than seven attempts per game. That's mind blowing. If he could, if he did that a full season, it would be a historic season. I'm pretty sure. And even then, I just don't think he can do it. And I love Kevin Herter. I mean, Kevin Herter. Think about how much the Hawks are just, you know, dreading how poorly they they chose some of their little, you know, little things like that. Like Kevin Herter would be perfect for the Hawks right now. Um, <clears throat> the Kings. Let's stay on them though. The Kings are tough because I do think they need to make a couple moves. I think that the the best version of the Kings we're yet to see, which is, you know, a little strange because they are outperforming, like I said, but they have so many quality players on their squad. They're so deep. Sabonis taking less shots than he's taken in years. I think since his rookie season, he's taking less shots, but he just is such a great team player in terms of doing exactly what's necessary on whatever squad he's in. And this team is a perfect example. Like he's setting a ton of screens. He's a rebound machine. Sabonis, you got to give your, give your credit to Sabonis. The dude is just exactly what you'd look for in a borderline all-star player. I know he's been an all-star probably won't be this year just because the offense has gone down a little bit, yeah. but that's not for lack of him being great. He's been awesome. Um, and they haven't even seen very good Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray has been pretty bad so far yeah. for, he was, he was okay in the beginning, got hurt. And then it's just kind of, he's been in a slump here, especially shooting. I think his, his three point shooting recently has been atrocious, yeah. but how polished he is, it'll come around. I'm not worried about Keegan Murray. Yeah. The one thing I will say for this team and the most impressive thing that I could even give them credit for is just their their spacing and off-ball movement is some of the best in the league right now. Like, they're always moving. They're always communicating. They're always looking to get themselves and their teammates in the best position possible, which sounds so obvious, and I don't know if you get as frustrated, Bernie. I'm sure you do. There's some teams in the league that you just watch, just stand still. Half their players just will get in the corner and just stand there, man. And it's like there's some of these guys that could be so much better. They could unlock so much more of their game if they just watched the Warriors play or watched even this Kings team play. See what they're doing with themselves when they don't have the ball. And you see how that's affecting some of these guys in terms of the, the looks they're getting. Like Kevin Herter 
shooting as good as he has has primarily been because of the spacing and how open he is when he gets to shoot. He should never be open, but he gets open because they're always moving. The biggest beneficiary of all of it is De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox is playing far and away the best basketball of his entire life, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the the best offensive efficiency I've ever seen from him, but yeah. he's also playing much better defense than I've ever seen from him too. So, you know, credit credit to Mike Brown. Credit to Mike Brown. Mike Brown has been a, a, a great assistant coach in the league for a while. Had a couple stints. I honestly don't think he gets enough credit for for his his time in Cleveland the er, the first time around. Uh, back back when LeBron was young, right? You remember that? Like yeah. those teams were so bad, and he still he would always have those those Cavaliers teams in the upper echelon of defensive teams in the league, and they had no business being there. They had no yeah. business. Go back and look at those squads. They were not good outside of LeBron and he still had them coached right. So credit to Mike Brown because he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. But it's it's all of it, man. It's it's what we it's what I get on my rants about and I've been ranting about recently in terms of coaches putting their players in the best position possible for the player themselves, right? And this team is so far this season one of the top three examples of that because even you look at guys like Davion Mitchell, right, coming off the bench, but in the perfect position for him to succeed. You yeah. know, he doesn't doesn't have to shoot a ton offensively, be like that that guy. He just comes in and is a stopper for them, and that's that's exactly where he's at in his career. It's just I don't know, man. They're they're just so fun to watch. I like how how much they like each other. It seems like they like to play. And, you know, if I had any recommendation for anybody, watch watch how Kevin Herter and Sabonis play together. They look like they've played together for so long, and they just started playing together. It's crazy. The communication, they know yeah. exactly where, where each other is going to be and where to go. It's a thing of beauty. And that is, to me, just a, a sign of great leadership on the team and mm -hmm. even better just communication as a whole. So, yeah, I yeah man, I love it. I definitely agree with you there. I mean, when I look at this squad, um, more so in terms of, you know, obviously I have my biases on what I think of the Kings are going to sure. be this year, but you know, they definitely do have a little bit of a deeper squad than I think a lot of people realize. Uh, obviously it's a bonus being the starter met who I've loved, um, coming out of college. I'm hoping that he can get a chance, you know, Rashawn Holmes, mm -hmm. I think it's starting to fall off in the depth chart. I think it's time for the Lakers to try to, yeah, he's been bad, try he's to poach bad. him. Um, and just kind of see what they can get from him. I think that they could potentially get some pretty, pretty good from Rashawn Holmes. I think he just needs a new challenge. Um, obviously Trey Lyles, good, good kind of depth, uh, third string we guy. We haven't even talked about Malik Monk has been incredible. <laughs> yeah. Malik Monk. As a bench is, guy. Yeah. Ooh. Coming off the bench, obviously from his Laker days last year, like balling out, like he's still balling out, uh, for yeah, the Sacramento Kings. I mean, this team is, is good. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, De'Aaron Fox is playing the way he is because of the fact that a lot of people started to question the move to move Tyrese Halliburton over to Indiana and kind of have the team built around, you know, maybe not built around, but, you know, one of the star focal points will be De'Aaron Fox at the point rather yeah. than Tyrese Halliburton. Obviously, I'm one of those guys. I'm a big Tyrese Halliburton guy, um, and I'd rather build around him. But De'Aaron Fox is kind of showing people like me like hey like yeah you can love your Tyrese Halliburton but I'm here too I'm still here balling and he clearly is I mean I can't discredit what De'Aaron Fox has done up to this point obviously um you know he's playing tr tremendously right now and that's something that the Sacramento Kings are going to continue to need to have if they want to stay uh within the sixth seed um and avoid the play well I guess would they avoid no they they would avoid it um and yep. and just like you know be a playoff team I think that this team, I think, is still, in my opinion, just one piece away from really being a playoff contender. Uh, but clearly, you know, Kevin Herter is picking up the slack for that for that missing superstar that I think that should be there. Um, and so, you know, we'll see, what, you know, if Kevin Herter can continue to do this the whole season, you know, because he's kind of he kind of has his moment. He had his moments in in uh, Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, there was times where I was like, yes, like this is what the Hawks needed. And then there were times where he just could not hit the bright side of a barn, um, uh, the broad side of a barn. But 
I, I think that this team depth wise is really deep. I think this team uh, starter wise has a pretty good starting core unit. Um, and like you said, I think Keegan Murray obviously is struggling, uh, but I think that's just kind of the highs and lows of a rookie at this point. Like rookies are yeah. going to have their, 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 uh, their moments and they're going to have their bad moments. And so, um, uh, you know, I think Keegan Murray will probably take another half, you know, half the season to really get acclimated to the NBA and acclimated to the way that Mike Brown wants to play. And I think as soon as that happens, I think the Kings are going to be a little bit more dangerous than I think a lot of people realize. Um, but you know, saying this, you know, as much as I was proven wrong, it's, it's a fun team to watch. It's definitely a fun team to watch. And if you yeah. know, I, I was, I was watching them uh, a couple of days ago against my Celtics. Um, and so I'm excited to, uh, excited to see what they're able to do, man. Yeah. There's one thing too. They're, they're in a, an interesting spot as far as our beloved timeline is concerned, right? Like they're, they're fairly young but they're also not super duper young like they yeah. they've actually kind of constructed their team in uh a, an unconventional way in the sense that they don't have a lot of their own picks out there at this point you know like De'Aaron fox obviously but he's been with the team now for almost what has he been in the league for six or seven years now six he's been in the league for a while let me see um <clears throat> but he's been in the league for a while davion mitchell and keegan murray are basically the guys they've drafted six years um it feels like longer with Darren fox i feel like i've been watching him on the kings for a decade now uh, but they're they're definitely in an interesting spot they have a lot they could do a lot they could move around um yeah. i the interesting part is where they would upgrade because they've they've said recently that they they don't want to move off of harrison barnes which is interesting but i also think like he, he clearly has wanted to be in Sacramento. He's been there for a, a bit now. And, uh, I mean, he seems like a great, like, veteran leadership presence to have around. He doesn't really ask for much. He just does all the little things. So yeah. I'd be interested to see what they did. But they, I agree with you. I think if they really want to be serious and go for it and compete, they should definitely consider upgrading somebody. Yeah. Um, the tough part is who, you know. And I would honestly – as much as I like Keegan Murray, I would consider if I was them just getting getting somebody who's in the timeline of all the other guys on your team. You know, package Keegan Murray and some picks, and then go get go get Carl Anthony Towns or something like that, right? And you're um, on this Carl uh, Anthony Towns trade. He's got to he's got to move. He's got to move. <laughs> I, he's just got to move. Um, I don't even like Carl Anthony Towns. I'm more just trying to find the perfect fit for him and other. You know, because. This yeah, is agree. a team that is they have to do something too because they they are going for the playoffs. Now they are the the team in the in professional team in American sports that has the longest drought of making it into the playoffs, I believe. Yeah. In any sport. Um, seeing as the Seattle Mariners made the MLB playoffs this last year. <laughs> Every other team in the league has in any other league has been the playoffs more recently than them. So they're going for the playoffs no matter what. And if Keegan Murray is not ready yet, you have all these other guys that are that are ready. You have De'Aaron Fox making the leap. You have Sabonis is doing everything he can to be that guy that you traded for. And you also have to justify yeah. moving off of Halliburton in the first place because he's playing like all NBA level right now. So yeah. you have to justify it by really going for it with Sabonis. So if I were them, I'd really, I'd really consider going for somebody. They're another sneaky i know i brought this guy up already too they're another sneaky they should probably look at kevin durant team too you know whether kevin durant wants to play in sacramento or not who cares <laughs> you know the question is could they put a package together that's worthy of getting kevin durant they probably they they're pretty on the borderline i don't know if they could you know i don't know how much keegan murray moves moves yeah. the needle in that department yeah. but um they definitely are a team i agree that needs to move and they have all the little pieces to make a deep run if they had that one more guy to put them over the top. Yeah. I'd be the reason I say Carl Anthony Towns and I brought him up first is just because like, I, I don't know. I like Sabonis at the, at the five, but I wouldn't mind if you, I mean, if you slid him into the four and had a, you know, a bigger center who could, you know, go, go out around the perimeter, like Carl Anthony Towns, that might be a, a really great fit for them in terms of adding even more shooting to the team, but also, mm -hmm a more versatile five to go alongside Sabonis would be really nice. Cause he, you know, 
he's he likes his down low game is he's got yeah. all these little moves he can get to the basket he's he's nice down low um on offense so find somebody to partner with him <laughs> in, yeah. in a different universe if he hadn't just spent year uh, a couple years with uh miles turner i would say him again too but that that <laughs> wouldn't work don't do that don't yeah. do that yeah and we'll talk about miles turner's a little bit later um but you know let us know in the comment section down below people what do you think about the sacramento kings team uh, you know, I'm still not a believer in terms of a playoff team, but they're a lot better than I think a lot of people realize. Um, and, you know, let us know what that one piece could be to get them over the hump. Uh, we'd love to know your comments and opinions in the comment section down below. And let us know where you think the Sacramento Kings will finish this season. We'd love to know your guys' thoughts.